So you're looking to purchase your first Spyderco. Perhaps you're considering buying a PM2 or a Spyderco Smock. Maybe you already have a pair of three. You're trying to get the larger sibling, the PM2, or you know the Smock has a savage blade and it's very, very fidgety. Today we're gonna to be comparing and contrasting these two knives. We're gonna be talking everything from locking mechanisms, uh, ergonomics, blade shapes, steels, everything you need to know so we can draw a conclusion here as to which knife is the best of the two. If you're ready for that video, then grab some popcorn, grab the coffee, and join me here. Don't forget to hit the like button because it is free after all. And hey, if you enjoy videos like this, I make them on a daily basis, so please consider subscribing to the channel. What is going on, everybody? My name is Miguel. Welcome back to the channel. You're watching Miguel EDC, where we talk everything EDC gear. Today, we're looking at these two knives right here. We have the first contender. We have the PM2 Spyderco Paramilitary 2. This one here has the G10 handle going on with a satin finish, flat grind, CPM S45 VN steel. This is USA made in Golden, Colorado. And we have the Spider Coast Mock. This beauty right here has the carbon fiber slash G10 combination handle going on. This one has the S30V steel and it has a nasty, nasty sheep's foot Warncliffe blade looking very, very, very good. This one has a hollow grind going on, which looks very, very savage. And this one is made in Taichung, Taiwan. So not in the US, but in Taichung, Taiwan. We're going to get into that here in just a moment we're going to be discussing everything you know the good the bad the ugly and everything else in between and by the way guys there are review videos for each of these both of these knives do have a review video for each one if you want to get in more detail about each of them and also there will be affiliate links down in the description if you want to learn more about these knives if you want to go ahead and check them out those links do help out the channel at no extra cost to you so let's start things off here with a quick measurement on these two guys first the pm2 so we got the total length on the pm2 coming in at around eight and a quarter inches handle on the pm2 is going to be around 4.80 4.85 inches right there and the total cutting edge on this guy is going to be around three and a quarter inches as far as the measurements for the smock we're looking at a total length it's a little bit shorter than the pm2 by a quarter inch so it's a total of eight inches overall handle length is going to be around four and a half inches total handle length and the cutting edge on this guy is exactly three inches quick observations right off the bat we have the the PM2 has a longer cutting edge, has a longer handle, and it's overall a quarter of an inch, for whatever that's worth to you, overall a quarter of an inch longer knife. The smock here has a slightly smaller handle, slightly smaller cutting edge, and it is a quarter inch shorter. So let's talk Spyderco for a moment. Spyderco has been making knives since 1976. That's when the company was established by husband and wife, Sal and Gail Glesser, and they have been doing the biz ever since. And fast forward almost 50 years, and here here we are, the company's still doing their best work whatsoever. Spyderco is one of those brands that has some of the highest quality materials used, the highest quality checks on their products. They are not afraid to actually test new and revolutionary different steels of all kinds. If there is any company out there that has one of the largest varieties of different steels offered in their knives, then that would be Spyderco. So they do a lot of R&D with different steels. All of their knife models are often offered in many, many different steel variants, and that is no difference here and uh, again they have been making knives for many many years now they actually have factories in the u.s so like we mentioned earlier this bad boy right here this bad mama jama the pm2 is made in the u.s this is actually a collaboration of sal glesser and eric glesser so father and son both collaborated on the very iconic pm2 it is made in the usa whereas the smock it is a spider co collaboration with a knife designer his name is kevin smock kevin smock and you can see his logo right right there. Spyderco is very well known for doing collaborations with many, many different knife designers. You'll see throughout their lineup, they have many, many different knives, just like, by the way, they Yojimbo 2 was a collaboration knife as well. You'll, see, you'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. But uh, yeah, Spyderco does a lot of different collaboration with knife makers. The Smuck is a collaboration knife, and it is manufactured in Taichung, Taiwan. Now, the first thought that probably comes to mind here for you would be, wait a second, so it's not made in the US, so my default it must be a really bad knife but i am here to tell you and um, i gotta i gotta preach this from the rooftops the taichung taiwan quality check and just overall quality 
might be a rival of the USA quality, if not up to standard, arguably a little bit higher. Again, that's for you to debate <laughs> down in the comments. It is just that good. It is just that good. And there's no difference between those Taichung made knives manufactured overseas versus the USA ones. Spyderco also has other factories in China, of course, with their more affordable models. And they also have a few that they manufacture in Japan. That being said, let's go ahead and dive into everything there is to know. Just basically comparing these two knives, one little section, one little bit at a time here, shall we? So let's start with the blade, right? We're looking at two very, very different blades on these two. Both are satin finished. So that is definitely something they have in common right there, which by the way, these can be acquired in DLC and so many other different finishes, you know, stone washed or whatever the case may be. So I'm a more of a satin person. I like these satin finishes on my blades if I can help it. What is different on these two, of course, aside from the steel, is the fact that they have two different blade geometries going on. Of course, this one is more of a drop point, very iconic uh, spider coat drop point with a little bit of a belly right here at the bottom. Uh, whereas the smock is going to be that classic, very aggressive looking Warren Cliff blade or sheep's foot or reverse tanto. The blade police is going to come after me if I don't get it right. So one of those but you get the idea there. So very different blade shape, of course. And something that's very, very important too is actually how the blade is made, right? What is the actual bevel or grind on the blade? So we have a flat grind going on throughout the PM2, which is gonna make it very, very slicey. As you can see, the grind is flat on both ends. There's nothing stopping that slice. When you cut on something, that's gonna go through all the way, nothing stopping it on the way out. So it is a very slicey blade there. There's a different bevel or grind going on on the smock, and that is a hollow grind so it's not going to be as slicey as the pm2 if the sliciness is all you're going for but it still slices like nobody's business so i mean for what it's worth that is one nasty very mean looking hollow grind right there and it, it puts in work it definitely puts in work and i mean it really comes down to preference i honestly like them both so much there are days where my flat grind definitely is really really good for cutting cardboard and things like that any type of slicing going on the pm2 is just slightly better but uh smock definitely also puts in work and it's one of these slices uh knives that i own despite not being a flat grind but a hollow grind instead next uh, let's talk about steels for a second so two different steels going on here although they're different they have more in common than you would think the s30v on the smock is a little bit of an older steel and the s45 vn if you will is uh, somewhat of the newer version of the s30v so i'm not a metal uh, a metallurgist <laughs> I'm not a metal expert in any way, I'll tell you that right off the bat, but with a little bit of uh, you know knowledge that I do have, research that I've done, the S30V as of the last five years or so uh, was considered a very, very premium steel. It's only gotten bumped down a little bit based on the newer, more capable steels that have come out recently, but the S30V is it's up there, it's a very capable steel. The S45VN, actually there's an in-between, there's S35VN, which is uh, an update or upgrade to the S30V, and then there's the S45VN as well, which in composition without getting too technical that could be a whole separate video right there right s30v versus s45 vn but without getting too too technical s45 vn is just the updated more modern version of s30v doesn't mean there's anything wrong with s30v both of them are really really good i think s45 vn offers offers a little bit better corrosion resistance than s30v both are good taking a good edge now it doesn't mean that that is the end of the road because like i mentioned these two spider co offers sprint runs and dealer exclusives all the time so if steel is all you're going after and you want specific steel on either knife chances are you're going to find a special dealer exclusive or spring run taking place at some point that's going to have the steel that you want and then there's always a premium version up there there's a s110v or perhaps the magna cut or what have you crew wear versions as well so again spider co really really likes to experiment with different steel which is a benefit to users because you get to have a knife that you like and love and also the steel combination that you want so moving on to the handle right so a g10 on the pm2 kind of gives you that very iconic grippery g10 that you're used to on the spider co knives the i want to say carbon fiber slash g10 combination here on the smock is slightly different in composition so it's not as grippy but it goes for a more of an elegant aesthetic i feel like you like that design pattern as well let's talk about ergonomics for a moment since we're here right ergonomics i want to say hanging on to my pm2 right it has a very iconic very spider co knife 
clients in general are very, very good with ergonomics. There's one of the things that they focus on a lot when engineering and designing a knife, and the PM2 is no exception. It's a large knife. It fits good on my medium, medium hands, if you will. They're not the largest or the smallest, but medium hands, plenty of handle right there still left. Whereas this mock, same deal going on by default, you have the index finger cut off right there, and then all your other fingers follow suit. And I have a little bit less handle going on. Remember that the actual knife overall is about a quarter of an inch shorter than the PM2. So in the default grip position here, I'm able to pretty much grip the entire handle. Now, something that is different on both of these is they, even though they both offer the forward choil, right? So if you forward choke on this guy, this is what it looks like on the PM2. It will be a little bit uncomfortable to use the jimping if you are forward choking on it, but you could probably rest your thumb on top of the blade like this and then just, you know, slice away. So that's good. Look how much handle I have left right there. The smock on the other hand, something similar happens, although it's a little bit more awkward, I would say, right? The way you carry your forward choke on this guy is slightly different. It's not necessarily a perfect circle because of the actual button compression lock, which we're gonna talk about next here in just a moment. But uh, you know, you can still achieve somewhat of a forward choke. You can still rest your thumb on the spine of the blade right there, still get some work done and still have plenty of handle left. I wanna say, if anything, honestly, I say the ergonomics point here goes to the PM2. It's just a tad bit more comfortable to do the original default grip and the forward choke on as compared to the smock in this case. So let's talk locking mechanisms, right? We haven't talked about that yet and that is the big elephant in the room. So the PM2 has the very iconic compression lock. So basically this works like a liner lock except it takes place in the back of the handle instead of in front where the blade edge is exposed. You could, you know, it's definitely safer from the standpoint that you are engaging it without having your fingers in the way of the blade. And it's also safer because of the way it actually uh, locks the blade in place with this uh, stop pin right here and the liner lock in the back. That compression lock is one of the strongest, you know, safest mechanisms for folding knives that you can have. It is very iconic. Spyderco has it in a lot of different knives, lots, lots of different knives. And then you have what is uh, a very similar approach, yet different is on the smock, which still does the same, but with a button. So when you push this button, then that disengages the blade. And as the blade opens that liner in the back, right? Just like the PM2 is what locks the blade in place. So similar style here, but with a button instead. So how this carries out in real life is you're using your index finger, whether you get a righty or lefty version for the PM2, you're using your index finger and and then, you know, you can, of course, you can, of course, deploy it with your index finger like that and close it. You could use your thumb deployment for this guy. Deploy it with your thumb. You do a very slow open as well. That is what spider cone knives are very, very known for. By the way, did you know that the founder, Sal Glesser, his very first prototype, this idea of a round hole was so that you could open your knife with one hand. So that's where the iconic round hole comes from. And that's where, of course, all the other spider cone knives, they all have the very signature round hole from. That's where that comes from. So that being said, the only the other deployment method you have is the very iconic reverse flick. And bam, you can do that all day with the PM2, no doubt about that. Whereas this mock, very similar, you have the thumb deployment here, bam. Right, thumb deployment all day, you could reverse flick this guy. It's something that's very interesting with this guy and every time you reverse flick this knife, you lose a little bit of <laughs> nail shavings. For whatever reason, I think it has to do with the fact that the hole is kind of tiny compared to the PM2. Not, not that that's an issue or anything. Something to take note of, right? So you could do the, of course, thumb deployment, reverse flick, but something that is unique to this mock and also that is unique to uh, basically a lot of other spider core knives because not that many have it, it is the flipper. So you also have the flipper deployment as well, which is nice. And then as far as closing this guy back up, that's where you engage the button. And then I want to say this guy is one of the drop shuttiest knives out there. When you unlock this guy, you can just drop shut. It drops shut very, very smoothly, very, very elegantly to say the least. Some people remove the second detent. I keep mine the way it came from the factory. Check out the review video if you want to learn a little bit more about that. So yeah, that's uh, basically something to consider right there. If you're more of a flipper type of individual, right? Well, only one of these two offers the flipper option. They both have the thumb hole, although it's a little bit bigger on the PM2. You can thumb deploy and reverse deploy all day, every day. That won't be an issue. And uh, only the smock has the button for the compression lock. So it's still a compression lock, although it works slightly different. And that just makes it very, very fidgety.
to you know just open and close this knife if you're into that you know exactly what i'm talking about i want to say out of these two the one that takes the cake fidgety factor wise or fidget friendly wise definitely this mock definitely this mock takes the cake right there so a couple other things that i noticed on this mock versus the pm2 you got these speed holes that's very iconic to smock knife designs so he does most of his knife designs will have the three holes on both sides this one here is covered by the pocket clip which by the way you probably noticed both of these have a deep pocket carry clip right this is not the default carry clip these are linked down below if you want to check them out by default the spider core knives come with the very non-deep carry pocket clip this thing right here and uh, yeah it allows to you know almost half an inch of your knife to show with the default pocket carry clip whereas with the deep pocket carry you're only showing a smidge of your knife if anything and i want to say out of these two with the aftermarket pocket clip definitely the pm2 would probably hide a little bit more in your pocket now right let's <laughs> i think if we do a size comparison on these two right when folded since we're talking about what that pocket feel is all about obviously the smock is going to take the cake right there as far as being the more slim the more elegant of the two the pm2 because of that bigger hole spidey hole definitely going to be a much wider knife you can even compare them to some of the other knives here if i make some room here is the pair of three so obviously that's a smaller brother to the pm2 here is another spider core knife the yojimbo 2 definitely closer to again the bigger size pm2 this mock is just so elegant it's such a smaller knife here here is the manix 2 and again this one is just a tad bigger or wider than the pm2 definitely the smoke still winning there right if you look at something like the rap model one that's where the smock gets a little bit closer again a much narrower design when folded and i'll do just one more because why not here is the cjrb pyrite alt and even this guy right is pretty close to the smock whereas the pm2 again still is a much wider in the pocket kind of knife let's compare them while open of course right just so you guys can see the overall looks the pair of three right there closer to the bigger brother the pm2 again the smock still being the narrower one here is a yojimbo now opened up so you can see that's the wide boy right there check out the manix 2 that's pretty wide as well closer to the pm2 then the smock the wrap model one right that's a little bit closer to the smock and last but not least the cjrb pyrite alt still a little bit closer to the smock both knives offer a tip-up carry configuration for both lefties and righties now if you for whatever reason are still carrying your knives tip down i don't know why but that maybe that's your preference only the pm2 offers that the smock does not offer any tip down carry options whereas the pm2 offers all four let's see which one is going to be a little bit of a thicker carry profile here they're both around the same honestly if i can get, if i can get them to line up right miguel you have uh, recess liners going on on the pm2 that's why you don't see much of the liners from the outside even though they're definitely there and they are not milled on the pm2 as for this mock you have very exposed liners you can see them all throughout i think that's part of the very elegant design and they are also not milled on the smock except for the holes right except for the three little speed holes on each side that's about the only milling going on on this guy so yeah let's do a quick weight check because why not all right which one should go first i want to say maybe this mock might be the heavier one of the two so let's do pm2 first all right pm2 is going to be 3.7 ounces whereas this mock is going to be 3.6 and apparently i need to work on my hand scale calibration so only about 0.1 of an ounce right there difference on these two again 3.7 on the pm2 3.6 on the smock so not a huge difference there as far as the weight department goes if, if that's something that you're considering of course so uh time to pick a winner here shall we honestly the purpose of this video is not to put one knife on a pedestal and bash the other or vice versa i find that the way you guys are going to get the most value out of a video like this is to showcase the pros and cons or the advantages uh the things that one knife has over the other and the other way around comparing and contrasting them so that if you are making a purchasing decision you can make your own decision right you don't have to go buy what some random guy on youtube says you should do but you should be able to take the information you're receiving right the comparison back and forth of these two very solid edc knives very premium knives from spyderco and of course be able to make your ultimate decision right which one is best for you now i will tell you if you're looking for a tool as a tool there's a reason why the pm2 has stood the test of time as one of the most popular knives that you can buy people praise this knife 
like this knife. They say nothing but great things about this knife. And honestly, that's what Spider Co. is all about. They take pride in making very, very capable tools. By the way, something that I learned as well, the reason why Sal Glesser named Spider Co. the company name is because of the sports cars at the time. Typically, the model that was a sportier version or performance oriented version will be the Spider, like the Porsche, you know, such and such Spider or the Mercedes such and such Spider or whatever. So anything with Spider was a performance oriented model of a car. So he took that concept and applied it to his knife company. And that's his uh, that's his reasoning behind naming the company Spyderco. So definitely with that performance in mind. So, you know, this guy, even as funky looking as it is, because I know at first when you start your EDC journey, this is not the most beautiful knife you think of right off the bat. When this first comes into the picture and you know nothing about knives, right? And you're like, what in the world is this thing? But honestly, once you start learning more and if you get a chance to pick one up and you start testing them out, you're going to find that it is a fantastic cutting tool. As a cutting tool, this one is probably going to be the best one of the two. Again, you got that flat grind going on right there, which is one of the sliciest grinds that you can have. You have a longer edge distance, so you can basically slide all the way from one end to the other, giving you more capable cuts and everything else in between ergonomically. Also a little bit better, 10, a little bit grippier on this guy. I'm not sure if I mentioned, but uh, this one has a little bit more jimping going on than the smock, right? The smock barely only has about those three grooves right there. That's about the extent of the jimping that you get, whereas the PM2, you have jimping going on right here behind the spidey hole, some more jimping integrated as part of the liners right there on the spine, more jimping going on right here on the forward choil, finger choil. So yeah, that's definitely gonna help you tool-wise to get a good grip on this guy. And like Nick Chavas says, if you go to the Vaseline factory, this knife is not leaving your hand. So yeah, that's what the PM2 has going for it. As a tool, you know it's reliable, it's gonna get the work done. Not to say any less from the Spider Coast Mach, but I feel like the Spider Coast Mach, you would want as uh, it's a more elegant piece, not as funky looking or as asymmetrical looking as the PM2, but rather a more elegant knife design. This is my church knife, my wedding knife, my fancy event type, you know, gentleman wear a suit type of knife because it is just a beautiful, elegant design. And I love it for that. It is a very, very premium knife. That hollow grind right there, that's just savage, right? Pure savage right there. And I love it. I love everything about this knife. Hence why I own both. Again, making a video like this and trying to just pick it one winner, I will be torn between the two. That's why I want you to make your own decision. But yeah, I would pick this guy not so much for, I, I know the cutting capability is there. The blade, if anything, the tip is a little bit more robust. Definitely you have more of a thicker blade since it's not a full flat grind, but instead a hollow grind. So you have that going. If you want the one of the few spider coats with a flipper, then this one is the one to go out of the two. That flipper is gonna be awesome. And this is a very, very fidgety knife, very drop shutty. And the compression lock, you're not dealing with a little bar right here that's gonna beat up your index finger if you do it multiple times, whereas these muck, you could open and close this guy 200, 2000 times in a row. And yeah, that, that button is not going to punish you in any type of way. And it's just an awesome way to close this guy. Now this one works a little bit different because it doesn't work like your typical button lock that you can just push the button and say the CJRB Pyrite, push the button and then open the knife like that. Uh, it's a little bit different on this guy, right? You wouldn't be able to open it even if I'm pushing the button. The only way that I found you could do that is if you do this, but, uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's just me hacking the knife there, but it was only meant for the disengagement portion, right? Uh, of course, you can flip it and do all the different opening mechanisms that we talked about. But yeah, as far as elegant, you know, the, the, the looks, right? I would take the smock. If you want the functionality, if you want the most cutting performance out of the two, if you want the more tool oriented ergonomics, then go the PM2 route. If you're looking for a nice piece, that's still a tool and it's gonna put in work, but still gonna look elegant. It's gonna be very, very slim in the pocket and it's gonna be super, super fidgety. Then go the smock route. Now, I didn't talk about prices on these guys. So this one is about $175, close to 180 depending on where you pick it up and if you get it on sale or not whereas this mock is going to be a little bit more typically around 200 dollars so about 30 dollar difference 20 to 30 dollar difference give or take but honestly i feel like you can't go wrong with either one i do want you guys to consider those two different avenues that you could take as to why you would choose one over the other but that is my two cents hopefully you guys have been able to take value from this video if you're considering getting any of these two or just for purely entertainment purposes hey guess what if you uh found this video useful if 
you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. That like button is free and it really helps out the channel a ton with the algorithm pushing this knife out to more and more people. And if this is your first time stopping by, please consider subscribing. I make all kinds of knife videos all the time on a daily basis, long form videos, shorts, uh, etc. So please consider subscribing. I want to say thank you very much to my Patreon supporters. If you would like to support the channel an extra step, the next level, please check out the Patreon link down below in the description where you can become a Patreon and supporter of the channel for as little as $1, $1 a month. Guys, if you made it to the end, you guys are the real MVP. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Let me know some feedback in the comments if you agree or disagree with me. Spoiler alert, we can still disagree and be friends. So please don't take anything that I said to heart. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.